Guys, we got purple snakes! Man, I got you something. Thanks, I love gifts. All right, so let's see what Ryan got me here. I like opening it, it feels like a shirt. I'm curious myself. <laughs> Since it wasn't opened, you don't know. Oh, snap. Hey, anybody know what those are? Support your local morph market. Dang, there's actually a lot of stickers in there. That was way more than I thought. Let's see here. Some morph market shirts. Dang! Uh, I got two here. Hope that means we renew our subscription. We did. <laughs> I made sure of it. And I bought some shirt, or you bought some shirts. Dang it! I'm taking the company card. <laughs> That's it. You bought Starbucks one too many times. So this one's mine. This one's yours because I'm still the double fat right at the moment. All right. <laughs> Yeah, all right. Support your Morph Market. We have a Morph Market page, so make sure you guys go check out our store on Morph Market. Say Morph Market again. Morph Market. <laughs> what are you gonna pick? Morph, Morph Market. market. Mm. And Lean Market too. <laughs> so a couple weeks ago, I told you guys in the video that we were gonna do a comparison between the Cape File Snakes and the Forest File Snakes, because we see them get misidentified a lot, especially on social media. So we have ours right here. Last time they were in shed, so we didn't want to bug them and they were eating. But first off, I'll show you this. This is an adult male Cape file snake. This is captive born. We got this from our buddy over at Bushfeld Reptiles, right? Yep, it's Warren. Reptiles, right? Yep. Bushfeld Reptiles, Warren. He uh, came over here from Africa and I, I guess he brought these guys with him. Yeah, he imported they, all of his collection. They were captive born in Africa, and he brought them over here when he moved. And uh, man, this thing is beautiful. Nice dark purples and grays. You can see it has a very blunt nose. That's because it likes to dig around. It uh, will go in burrows a lot and be stay under leaf litter. It's, the term is fossorial. They like to be like underground, I guess. <laughs> They, and they don't real active. They don't much enjoy being lifted up because they are ground dwelling. So let me get them to calm down. They're usually very calm, um, not bitey at all. So when you feed these guys, they kind of like blindly like ram their face into the prey. Like I I don't know why, but like they're it's really kind of comical. Like they don't grab it and wrap it around. They'll like lunge with their mouth open and like thrash their face around trying to like almost like they can't even see it like they're blindly thrashing their face around it's really weird but um you can see these really elevated scales and they have huge gaps in between them where you can see the skin which is where you see the purple mm -hmm. it's like mixing the gray and the red of the blood vessels i think but and they say that the scales are separated like that and keeled so that they can trap their prey against the wall of a burrow or something like that to hold it still. Um, kind of like a mole snake. These guys feed on snakes a lot when they're in the wild. And um, I'm sure they also do like small birds and mice and stuff, whatever they come across, but they are snake eaters as well. Mm -hmm. So when you're pairing them, make sure they're well fed beforehand. Uh, <laughs> Keep an eye on them. We were just talking to a friend of ours, Louis, last week, and he's like, yeah, I had my uh, capes paired together, and uh, opened the drawer, and the male was like halfway down the female's throat, and I had to like get her to like, get him up, and like, he got spit out and was fine, but, you know, <laughs> gave that one a rest after that. <laughs> so, like, that's a crazy thing. You gotta be careful. So that's like a CB cape file sneak. The best way to identify the capes is the white dorsal, um, Scalation. Mm -hmm. so. Now we'll move on to forest file snakes. These are the Mahalia cross eye. These are Capensis, uh, the Latin Capensis. name. Capensis. But this one is actually a wild caught. We have brought in a collection, a group of them, last year, a little more than a year ago. Uh, treated. Uh, we've been 
building them up over this last year, trying to get their like uh, body condition better because they come out of the wild, they can be a little beat up. They had a lot of um, wounds from being uh, attacked by other animals. Uh, you can see the scars along the animal's body that have healed over nicely. Mm -hmm. um, it isn't as thick as this other one, even though it probably is older. I would imagine. Because it didn't get, like, I, this thing feeds all the time here. This thing fed whenever it could in the wild. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So while it does look a little skinny still, it is like tripled in size since we got it. Super healthy for sure. There's no more loose skin at the end, which when it came in, there was loose, uh, loose flaps because it was a little probably dehydrated and also didn't get to eat a lot. But you can notice the tone is a little lighter on the uh, forest file snakes. And also they don't have that white ridge on the back. So most of the time, these things are coming in wild caught both of these species. And a lot of times I see people posting these guys up from an expo saying that they got a new Cape file snake and it doesn't have the markings. And I'm like, ah, well, you know, that's not it. But <laughs> so that's one of the reasons we're making this video. Number one, we love this, these species of file snakes. They're so cool. They have really cool scalation. They're very interesting animals to deal with. And there's not a lot of information out there about them either. Like I've been studying for over a year trying to get any information I can on them and it's so impossible to find any documentation. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about how they have a, like a triangular body? People might think since the, the ridge in their back is kind of pointed that they're like unhealthy or something like that, but this right. is the this body is, structure. This is the ideal body structure. It's going to be a triangular sneak. It's not going to look round. So when you see the huge ridge on the back, that's meant to be that way. I don't know why it's designed that way. <laughs> I would love to know like the taxonomical reason for that, but these things also have, I don't know if the camera can see it, but that has this amazing sheen of iridescence on scales. Can you, is it picking it up at all? Not well. Especially if you have them out in like natural sunlight. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So where uh, are they from? Right. So these guys are from Central Africa. Ha! Mm -hmm. And I'll show you right here on the map. This is the distribution of both species. The forest files are in red and the capes are in blue. And you can see the geographical spread is pretty, pretty wide on these. Um, so you're looking at about the same areas for the forest file snakes that you would find ball pythons. Um, so we largely keep these the same way we would keep a ball python. The only difference really is I keep them probably about five degrees cooler. So I have them on an 85, 86 degree hotspot instead of a 90. Um, I do like to keep it a little bit more moist because they are fossorial. So sorry about the moist. They are fossorial. So they would get a little bit more humidity being underneath like the subfloor of the forest or savanna or whatever you want to call it depending on which one so they do reach into the congo too which would mean rainforest and i like to keep the substrate way deeper like at least four inches of substrate so that they can burrow down because i find that when they have that option they will do that they like the security of being underneath of something deep that they can cruise around in so rather than having a cork bark in there since they wouldn't really do that they'd want to be like underneath of a substrate, give them that so they can burrow around in there, get some nice moisture from the substrate, and yeah, that's about it. Uh, look at this little guy go. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe just because of this emu. Who doesn't love baby emus? So the moral of the story is don't feed your ball pythons to your foul snakes. But make sure you guys check out one of these videos, check out our podcast channel, and uh, yeah. Maybe try one of these videos. It's uh, what's you know best for you to watch. It's one of ours. So, thank you guys so much. Ah. Hmm. Hmm.